into the property today um, the road so far doesn't look that bad but we know uh, from last time I'll put a link somewhere up here um, last time we came here we know the road wasn't plowed all the way so uh, we parked down here where we usually do when we walk in about a mile and change away and we loaded up some sleds and we're gonna just bring some miscellaneous stuff that we don't need right now into the property so we can store it in the camper for it now. So we don't have to do all of our moving come April. Um, brought some snowshoes because the snow usually gets pretty deep. I don't know if you can see, maybe back there. It's, uh, it's pretty deep. So uh, we're gonna just have a nice walk into the woods and see how, how well this sledding thing goes. Well, Shakoi's sled was doing good because she strapped it in. I made it a whole 50 feet and everything fell off because <laughs> the center of gravity is kind of high up where that tent is. We got some straps and uh, we'll just strap it on the sled, make sure it works. Take two, action. actually a little bit further than halfway um, and it was all uphill so now we're sweaty um, <laughs> hot yeah uh, and my sled took a spill a couple times once we got past the plowed part because uh, the, the ground started to get a little uneven so now is gonna be the real fun part because it's all downhill from here um, we didn't really think this part through so I don't know if we're gonna have to ride the sleds or <laughs> Let him go and see what happens. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, I guess we'll let you know when we get there. <laughs> Wish us luck. Wish us luck. All right. 
right, so we made it to the land. Shikoi's taking a little nap there. Some beautiful sunshine today, some high clouds, uh, not too bad. Um, gonna put all of our stuff in the camper so it'll be safe. Probably not safe from the mice that live in there, but it'll be safe uh, from the snow, the elements, and any any hoodlums that come by here. But there aren't any because our tracks are the only tracks here, so that's good. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get to shoveling, get to unloading, and then spend some quality time here at our land. Somebody, somebody's been down here, and uh, I don't know if it's a dozer or a snowcat or a skid steer or something, but there's some nice big tracks. They look like they're from actual tracks, like an excavator track or something. Uh, so that worked in our benefit because, I don't know, I've got some long snowshoes right here. shikoi has got some small ones, but I don't know if I would have been able to sled with the snowshoes and the sled behind me. I feel like my shoes would have probably caught it um, a bunch. And it also helped us that we were able to ride down. That was pretty fun. Yeah, my sled has like a seat on it. My sled, I was sitting right on that, and uh, that was a lot of fun. I might modify the sled so I can have a seat on it from from now on, on the way down. <laughs> Somehow. Um, so we're here, we're going to shovel off the camper once again, because it's probably about a foot of snow on the ground. So seems like there's less on the camper, so uh, we'll see. showing on and off the camper um, I don't know how old this camper is it could be as old as me or Shikoi um, and we're both in our mid-20s I realized that this this was cracked I don't know if uh, maybe it was from my shovel hitting it or maybe just from the weight of the snow but I, I believe that's like ventilation you know I see a fan in there and a grate so I'm assuming it's ventilation um, so luckily we brought some uh, plastic bags or plastic drop cloth or something like that uh, we always have weird stuff like that hanging around, but you never know when they're going to come in use. Um, actually, it could have been dry rot, too, because now that I look at the AC unit, there's a lot of dry rot on it. Um, 
you know, camper's been out in the sun for a long time. So, um, yeah, we're just going to put some plastic over this, and that way, next time it snows, no snow will melt in there or anything. Um, so just quick, simple, easy fix. First time snowshoeing on our property, and it's uh, going pretty good once we got the hang of putting our snowshoes on. <laughs> Mine are pretty old, so they don't have like ratchet strap bindings. They got like some weird ropey bindings. And Mine have a stupid buckle. Yeah. I lifted my foot and they were gone. So it's going pretty good now, especially you know, considering there's like a foot of snow on the ground. It's just so much easier than sinking in. Um, we tried snowshoeing last year at some point. And we both just got so frustrated with it. We are like, why are we doing this? Why are we... <laughs> so many times you saw. Yeah, but now we're getting the hang of it. It takes a little while to get the hang of it. It's one of those things where you see people doing it and you're like, oh, that seems easy. Yeah, and then you put them on your feet and then your face first in the snow. Yeah, yeah, but but once you get the hang of it, it's like riding a bike. Kind of. <laughs> um, the great thing is down here we see so much firewood that will be for next year. It's just a matter of getting it hauled up. Uh, right now we're probably in a yurt. Um, that's terrible at holding heat. We're probably burning, I don't know, five cords a year, maybe six cords a year, if, if we can get that. So uh, hopefully we can get away, get away with two, maybe three cords a year um, in a small cabin that's properly insulated. well insulated, yeah. Um, and that's, that's tight enough, but not too tight where it creates draft issues with the stove. So we'll see. Um, but the good thing is we, we know that we have some firewood here. We like, have so much maple down. I mean, if you look over there, look, I don't know if you can see it behind me, there's a lot of downed wood. It's pretty great to have an abundant resource of it. Um, there's a lot of softwood here, but there's a lot of small um, hardwood too. Not, not too small, but maybe 50 years old, something like that. If the beavers don't take it all. If the beavers don't take it all, yeah. <laughs> something we'll work on. So, uh, maybe, we, maybe we can ask them politely to... Because the beaver, the beaver lodge is like right on our property line, so maybe we can ask them politely to go that way to the um, neighbor's property because they don't live here year-round, and we need the firewood. Our neighbor doesn't. But so, we yeah. still want the beavers as neighbors. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're cool. They're cool people. The beavers are cool people, is what I mean. Don't know how the real people. Are. Yeah. So we're gonna continue our snowshoe up. We're gonna go see the beaver pond maybe, and then we're gonna um, snowshoe slash sled back back to the truck. So that's what I was mentioning earlier. There's a whole bunch of, that's I don't know, maybe it's one tree, maybe it's five trees, I don't know. But it's a lot of hardwood, it looks like maple to us. Um, there's also a lot of birch here. Sometimes it's not the best firewood by some people's standards, but we burn it and it burns great. So. We even burn cedar and that's nice. Yeah, there's a lot of down cedar here, which we've mentioned in other videos. I'll put a link again somewhere up here. Yeah, cedar burns great. I mean, it burns fast, but it burns really hot. Um, so it's really good for starting fires in the morning when it's like 14 degrees Fahrenheit inside the yurt. <laughs> so uh, it's 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 a great resource to have. And we're, we've been making shingles. We are big fans of cedar. He's, he's a pretty big fan of just snow in general. So it's the home stretch before we get to the truck, and uh, I was gonna race Shikoi, but, but it seems she already beat me to the sled. So uh, I guess I'll go down after her and uh, see how much I can document without wiping out. Ugh. Wasn't much.
So, we are walking. No, stop. No, stop saying so. Take two. Action.